Dear Dr. Björk and Dr. Kwok, other members of the jury and professors of the Faculté Evangelique du Cameroun, external readers and all others attending Lier Roche Ntanke Nana's defense of his dissertation entitled Le Medumba Disciple de Christ et le Mangabe, An Etude Théologique et Ethnomusicologique. I greet you from Dallas, Texas, USA. I feel a great loss for not being able to be with you in person, but God made clear to me in February that certain health problems would not allow me to travel to Cameroon in June. I'll order my remarks in three parts. First, I'll describe my professional and personal history with Roche. Second, I'll address strengths and weaknesses I see in his dissertation. And third, and finally, I'll make several suggestions that I believe will multiply the fruit of Roche's labor in the future. First, some parts of our relationship. Roche and I first met in 2002 when he and I began teaching ethnomusicology for SIL's Africa Orientation Course, or AOC, in Yaoundé. Also in Yaoundé, we worked together with Dan Fitzgerald, Cheryl Mwamba, and Ferdinand Dubsop in forming the SIL Ethnomusicology Lab and Archive. Roche helped me in research for my own doctoral dissertation in ethnomusicology from the University of California Los Angeles, or UCLA. He traveled with me to Bacham for Nkomse, or Finahai, of a deceased man in another Bamileke language group, the Nyembo. I successfully defended my PhD in Los Angeles in 2005, and Roche had a part in that. When, when my family and I returned to Cameroon later in 2005, Roche asked me to participate in the Seminaire National de Louange et d'Adoration, or SENELA, a conference of which he was president at the time. And I think his wife Angeline played a key role in that conference also. Later in 2005, he flew with my wife Barb and our daughter Lydia to Gemina in the Democratic Republic of Congo to help teach a songwriting workshop. While there, in addition to contributing greatly to the workshop, Roche led one of the key artists, Punyama, to Christ. Roche was also able to attend the Global Consultation on Music and Mission, GCOM, in 2006 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the U.S., and my family and I drove him around to meet many of our supporters who were delighted to meet him. In addition to these events, since 2006, I was on Roche's Master's Thesis Committee and closely involved in responding to each chapter of his doctoral dissertation. In June 2018, we also were able to welcome him to Dallas, where he attended and began learning to teach a very important course, Arts for a Better Future. Throughout these and other experiences, Roche and I related to each other in a variety of ways and roles, sometimes several roles simultaneously. I was his mentor in the field of ethnomusicology, and he taught me many things about Cameroonian arts, the church, worship, and reconciliation. Roche has even served as my pastor, praying for and advising me as I entered unfamiliar, potentially dangerous spiritual contexts in the west of Cameroon. We've also, of course, become friends. Through all of this, I've witnessed Roche display a commitment to excellence, polite, dis polite disregard sometimes of some people who disagree with him, a love of Africa and pride in being Cameroonian, and a commitment to an acknowledgement of the responsibility he carries because of the many gifts God has given him. Two stories illustrate the depth of Roche's courage and character. First, at Senela, 
Roche recognized a rift, a breakdown of trust between worship leaders and pastors in his community of churches. He heard and responded to God's call for him to lead these two groups through a process of repentance and forgiveness. Powerful reconciliation began that evening, which continues. Second, after several years of marriage, Roche and Angeline felt God convicting them to change a fundamental part of how they were raising their children. They had been following a common pattern of Cameroonians moving from villages to cities and teaching their children only French and English a pattern of urbanization common throughout the world. But God impressed on them the great value and richness of the cultures into which they were born. For Roche, this was the Medumba community. So they began speaking to their children in their mother tongues whenever they could, and I think this was complicated, but also taking long trips back to their home regions to have their children learn from other relatives and village elders. This was a costly decision in many ways, financially with their time and with the limited energy. But it provides a crucial example to other urbanites who are losing their heritage in this global migration. It will also, I think, prepare their children to practice critical contextualization that will, they will need as they grow older and make their own decisions in following Christ. Now for my second section, remarks on Roche's research and dissertation. Roche set out to answer a difficult question. Quel pourrait être le rôle et la place appropriée du genre artistique local dans la vie d'un Medumba, disciple de Christ? Or, in English, what roles should or could local artistic genres play in the lives of Medumba, disciples of Christ? People not just Christians, but people following Christ. Answering this question required Roche to complete an exceptionally difficult set of tasks. To integrate ethnographic, artistic, missiological, and hermeneutical research and analytical approaches into a coherent case for the benefits available to Medumba dis disciples of Christ in drawing on their Mangabu genre. He recognized that a multidisciplinary approach was necessary because arts, culture, and spiritual development are inextricably intertwined. All in all, Roche succeeded in crafting a project that could be researched, incorporating multiple intellectual and field research methods. Because a type of artistry, Mangaba, was central to his thesis, Roche needed to provide a rich library of audio, video, and photographic recordings. This he did, available on a flash drives, also artistically designed, you'll notice. Roche also included abstracted analytical descriptions of Mangaba as an art form, including musical transcription. This is laudable and necessary, though how these an analyses fit into the broader thesis was sometimes less clear. Because of the multidisciplinary nature of the study, Roche needed to explore a number of disparate bodies of literature. The task of building on previous works was perhaps made even more difficult by the youth of the field that most directly relates to his work ethnodoxology. So similarly rich examinations of local artistic genres in Christian discipleship and spiritual development are relatively, relatively rare. In general, Roche built a solid foundation of previous studies. He could, however, have cited more recent ethnomusicological and folklore literature. 
More importantly, he only briefly mentions Cameroonian contributions to the global wave of indigenizing liturgies in the Catholic Church, spawned by results of the Second Vatican Council. In Cameroon, Abbe Pierre-Claude Ngumu went through a process parallel to Roche's among the Beti community, resulting in the renowned Yaoundé Ewondo Cathedral Choir. In addition, Jean-Marie Bodo wrote two books discussing liturgy and traditional expressions. The first, Y a-t-il une musique sacrée, published in 1991, and La musique, instrument privilégié de la liturgie pour la seconde évangélisation du Cameroun, he wrote, published in 1992. Roche referenced one of Bodo's works, but did not seem to benefit from their experience and conceptualizations that happened so close to home. Roche also does not build on the success of Dan Fitzgerald and Yves Leonard's work with the Baca in East Cameroon. He's told me that he wanted to start with a clean slate in his research, so his ideas would, would be novel but that approach can also keep one from reaching further in their research. That's one potential weakness in Roche's work. But Roche is not interested in being only a scholar, but is clearly dedicated to being a change agent in the Cameroonian church and beyond. He doggedly maintained a posture of prophetic relevance to the church, often in his work. Roche also gave himself to the challenge of persuading other Africans to make a paradigm shift. Developing tools and ideas to convince people to change the way they think that have both scholarly depth and effect and effect the desired change is a fraught process, difficult. Roche seems to have chosen simplicity in his models in helping change Western to African brains to aid his listeners to understand and change, sometimes at the expense of nuanced and scholarly precision. This model he proposes, I suggest, should be just a beginning. We'll see whether it is simplistic or appropriately simple as it evolves in the future. Now for my third section. Thoughts about Roche's future scholarship and ministry. First, some dangers to avoid. Roche has a tendency to generalize his experience and conceptual framework to other contexts and communities without necessarily including research to verify whether these thoughts are true. And this was a common subject of dialogue as I read and responded to drafts of his dissertation. I often found myself cautioning Roche to recognize global and local complexity and change, especially when he wrote of Africans as a whole being this way or that way. In fact, there are over 50 countries in Africa, over a billion individuals speaking more than 1,500 languages, untold millions of people migrating to cities voluntarily, with others forced to move by war or environmental catastrophes. A growing majority of Africans speak multiple languages and regularly access the Internet. There are always exceptions to any conceptual framework, and it's important to explore them. These explorations of exceptions will likely enrich anyone's framework, making it applicable to more people. Roche always accepted and responded to my critiques in this area, but he'll need to discipline himself to continue to do this as he grows as a scholar and influencer. Recognizing exceptions and knowing when and how to acknowledge them without undermining one's thesis is a complex skill that marks exceptional scholars. And I believe Roche can become such an exceptional scholar. 
Another danger for all scholars, including me, is this. I and others often assume that my ideas are novel, unique to me, when most of them have actually already been explored. Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun, and this is mostly true. So we all, all scholars, need to be humble. In at least two areas, however, I encourage Roche to do the opposite of such nuanced scholarship based on my own thoughts, my own potential hubris. These two frameworks are ones I'm finding to be universally true and powerfully explanatory. And now I'll address Roche directly. First, Roche, approach each act of human creativity through the lens of artistic communication genres. As has recently become clearer to you, music, dance, drama, visual arts, etc., these outside categories are at best secondary descriptors of how humans do and think of arts. Start with the insider's category of communication. Second, test my argument that artistic dynamism results from artists drawing on the most malleable elements of their tradition in ways that energize the most stable, and that this dynamism can result in flourishing communities. I think that this is an insight God gave to me that can have enduring uh, expansions of the kingdom of heaven. Roche, I hope that you can turn elements of your dissertation into articles and perhaps a book or books very soon. In particular, your stories of learning the language and arts of your home cultures as a family should be published and told and read widely. It will provide hope and a clear path for others who have grown up in cities to reclaim creativity in their home cultures in important ways. You have completed a very long, difficult, pioneering, complicated process of thinking, researching, and writing. Despite my pointing out elements that need improvement, I, have, I, I believe that you have succeeded well and that it has been costly also. One cost I haven't yet mentioned, which results from pioneering or even being prophetic, is opposition. I wrote this in a comment. Tu es pionnier dans plusieurs domaines. Cela ne se fait pas sans des blessures émotionnelles et spirituelles. As you have learned, Sabbath and spiritual, physical and emotional support are essential. Also essential is family. Angeline, Connie, Mency, Sikamen and Numka know that you have all contributed to and sacrificed for the success of this project of Angeline, your husband, and children, your father. You are deserving of much gratitude. And Roche, I look forward to and will pray for you and your family's growing humility and influence in extending the kingdom of heaven in Cameroon, Africa, and beyond. From me, your mentor, colleague, brother, and friend, Brian Schrag, Ph.D.